everyone's time too much. Um, so I've just gone through a little bit about myself um, and what type of resources I um, offer uh, to anyone who's looking to join ourselves. So maybe we'll get the ball rolling now and I'll just ask a little bit about yourself, Anne-Marie, as well. Um, just to introduce Anne-Marie, she looks after the entire fashion department. Um, she's really helped build the department and the programmes themselves and she has a wealth of knowledge behind her. Um, so she's a, fa a fantastic uh, resource to have. Um, so maybe Anne-Marie, you'd like to tell us a little bit about your background. Thanks Sarah. Thanks Sarah for that. I hope I live up to that reputation. Um, okay so yeah I mean I've been in fashion a long time everybody and you know I worked with global companies such as Saks Fifth Avenue, The Body Shop, Claire's Accessories you know to name a few. Um, I got into the lecturing end of it um, several years ago so I just wanted to sort of develop um, you know, my knowledge, but then also get involved with supporting the growth of younger people to get involved in the industry. So I suppose that led me to Portobello and just with the wealth of knowledge and background and experience, then I, you know, I joined Portobello and I, through the several years, I've become head of fashion at Portobello. And I really, my passion is, of course, I love fashion, but also to help and support and develop, you know, and see people become successful. That's why I'm also a mentor with Enterprise Art Dublin Enterprise Board and me partnership. Um, so I'm involved in a lot of different aspects with, um, I suppose, growth, um, identifying individuals that want to develop and be successful and then marrying that with the fashion industry, which is Excellent. exciting, challenging, fun lots of opportunities and and therefore so we developed our degree program as well within portobello fantastic amazing like i said a wealth of knowledge behind you as well and is there a particular thing that is your favorite thing about teaching in portobello because you, you do teach as well yeah i do lecture on the uh, the particular modules that i've expertise in and I mean, I think developing those modules and developing the content so that it makes it fun, interactive, um, you know, marrying the academics with the practical end of things and really developing that and then seeing people come on board and get really excited about the prospect of having um, a career in fashion because there's lots of opportunities, there's lots of different directions you can go in. So I think being, you know, heading up and being part of that team, um, we have a great team at Portobello Fashion. Of course, the whole college has great lecturers, but particularly in fashion, we're very, you know, everyone has a lot of experience in the business. Um, you know, people have been in it quite a while and then newer, newer people have come on board with newer experience because fashion changes rapidly, you know, and it's something you've got to really keep on top of. And, you know, be really invested in that because, you know, there's fast fashion, there's slow fashion, there's affordable fashion, there's luxury fashion, there's sustainability, which is a huge one now. So I suppose really keeping that interesting and up to date and involving everyone in the process is, is what I love. Amazing. Amazing. And yet you're right. It's a fantastic uh, team. I'm always happy to be a part of it for my little section as well. But no, everyone is just fantastic. They're really amazing and complete experts in their field um, as well. And it's a great opportunity for people who are looking to study with us in terms of connecting um, and networking and kind of reviewing their pathway because you've got so many people from different backgrounds as well like you said which is fantastic so we have um, a program coming up in the next few weeks it's our fashion buying and merchandising QQI level five um, yeah. and that's starting on the 7th of May would you like to maybe tell us a little bit about that program yeah. Anne-Marie? Yeah, so that's the QQI level five um, I suppose level five is really um, an introduction into um, an area of business that's of interest. And in our case, it's the, the fashion buying and merchandising and the visual display. There are two modules in there. You could book on separately or book them together. Um, and really, it gives you an introduction into what fashion buying and merchandising is all about, what visual merchandising is all about. 
and then helps you, you know, sort of decide. It, you could be deciding, do I want to get into this business? Do I want to be a part of this business? Or you're in the business and you see you really want want to study on the degree program so you want to take a look at what that's all about how do you develop your skills what do we discuss what do we talk about what do we learn you know and you're looking at trend forecasting you're looking at customer profiling you're looking at planning range as a product and so it's really an introduction into that area of it and then you can decide from there the direction you'd like to go in mm -hmm. that's that's fantastic. And then a question that often pops up for me is um, when I'm talking to people, um, what's the main difference between the fashion buying and merchandising QQI and then the visual display? Yeah, so, so the fashion buying merchandising is really the business of fashion mm -hmm. and visual display is how you display a product in a store. When you talk about fashion buying and merchandising, the merching, merchandising you're discussing in there is about budgets, numbers, allocate you know how much stock you have in store where what stores does it go into um how much inventory do you have what does that cost um and then obviously the buying has that element of it but also the creation of the product range so mm -hmm. the you know using trends to support the idea of putting a range of product together to sell in a business the visual then is how you display that product OK, so everyone works together within this business to ensure that the product looks great. It's at the right price for the customer and then how much inventory and how many choices you have. So it's really all about looking at that and then pulling all of that together. So visual is very creative, very hands on, you know, um, visual merchandising is a very physical job. Um, if you're doing it in store, obviously, if you're, there's visual merchandising attached to online businesses as well. And so when you're looking at online businesses, you're looking at where it's displayed on the website, what pages, you know, are the products on? What does the, the opening home page look like? You know, visually appealing to the consumer online and then in store, how do the, what do the window displays look like? How do you draw people into the store with the display? And then the fashion buying and merchandising is all the business end of it, okay? Very business focused on the buying and merchandising side. Obviously, you do have the creative element in there with buying as well, because you are developing mood boards and you are developing range plans, but then you're really focused in on, you know, who is your customer and how do you get a product from, from where it's developed, where it's sourced, where it's manufactured in front of the customer, into the customer's hands. And is that, you know, and maximizing the business by focusing on what really customers really want. That's mm -hmm. a very in a nutshell kind of explanation. It but feels know, very expansive. It <laughs> feels like you've it's, completely expanded yeah. on that, so that's perfect. Um, but that's a question that always pops up yeah. as well. Um, and we have like um, a fantastic group of people who are always kind of drawn to that course as well. And um, it can be people with no sort of, you know, experience behind them. And then it can be people who've been in retail or marketing and stuff for years. So um, yeah. it's a really interesting program and it kind of pulls um, people in that are kind of interested from completely different dynamics as well, which is always, it makes it easier. Yeah. Um, and then the program is, like you said, you can do a combined yeah. um, and it comes in a uh, little bit easier to manage um, and obviously it's a transition so then you 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 qualify with two QQI level yeah, fives which is fantastic exactly it's amazing. Two certificates. Yeah. and then also you know it's blended so it's online and exactly it's a yeah. mix of recorded sessions and live sessions mm -hmm. and so really everything is you know so anyone living anywhere in the world can can sign in and sign on that's the beauty of yeah. that we've had students in london we've had students from canada um, tuning exactly in. Um, yeah you know so that that's the beauty of that because it's going to give you and then the notes are very complete and the content is very supportive of what you're learning so yeah it's a, it's a great introduction the qqi Definitely. 
And we would, I would find as well, a lot of um, people joining the programme would actually be prompted to join the programme by their employers. And um, so it definitely helps when you're looking to maybe upscale or move up in your pay scale where you currently are. So um, again, it's a great introduction to the programme and it looks fantastic um, when you're kind of looking around and trying to find your feet then in the industry as well. It definitely is very appealing, 110%. Um, and then in terms of um, moving into the September intake, um, we have two fantastic degree programmes, um, both uh, carry a BA Honours Level 8. So we have the Fashion Buying and Merchandising and then we have a Fashion Management um, degree as well. What kind of modules would someone expect if they were doing the Fashion Buying and Merchandising uh, degree programme? So what you're looking at with the two degrees is it, the first year is the introduction year, the foundation year. So you're studying together. So whatever, mm -hmm. you don't actually make a decision on the direction you want Fantastic. to take until the end of second year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, or sorry, the end of first year going into second year. So really we get the modules in first year are very much a broad spectrum of all the things that you would need to develop in any side of the fashion business. So mm -hmm. you have the fashion buying and merchandising, you have a, a study skills module in there, which is great because, you know, sometimes people are taking the leap into a degree program or into third level education. And it's a different type of study, you know, it's academic mm -hmm. writing, it's referencing, so it's goal setting and pulling all that together. So really helping people to build their confidence, I suppose, in, in that learning environment in third level education. And so then you have trend forecasting, which everyone loves because it's very exciting and it's been looking, you get to um, look at trends a year ahead of time. We're connected in with trend forecasting companies that provide us with lookbooks, et cetera. You can, they also have webinars um, and you get, it's exciting because then you get to see what's happening and what's going to be coming down the line a year, a, a, a year from now. And then you also get to learn about how to look at trends, what to focus on, how to choose them. Um, you've got the history of fashion in there as well, which is a really interesting module. Um, you know, you've got uh, garment, technology in there because so it's you're learning how to garments are made you're learning about all the technology that's used you're developing garment um, tech packs which are the specifications on how products should be made and developed um you, you know so it's a good mix consumer insights in there so really learning the full width of the business of fashion Amazing. And, then, and that's brilliant for the first yeah. year as well, that you can decide um, at the end of the year if you want to stick with the fashion buying, if you chose yeah. that, or if you want to move to the fashion management and vice versa. Yeah. Do you find an awful lot of people do switch around or? Yeah, I mean, people tend to, if they haven't made up their mind, sometimes people have made up their mind in one direction, then it changes throughout the yeah. year they mm -hmm. feel that they you know the modules that they're really interested in are leading them one way um mm -hmm. then you get people who are you know still haven't made up their mind to the end of the year but then we support mm -hmm. and, and help with that so mm -hmm. you know we're asked about what you know when we give feedback one-to-one -one feedback sessions as well as you know um workshops and maybe cv writing and things like that um mm -hmm. and so you, it's it's about really deciding at the end of the first year what you'd love to do, what you'd really like to do, what you know, because you're going to spend a lot of time, I believe, in a career, yeah. Um, yeah. and so you have to love what you do, and and that's and people then will find a sport. I suppose some people find that they have a natural um, leaning towards numbers mm -hmm. or leaning mm -hmm. towards creativity you know, or leaning towards visual or whatever it may be. So they'll sort of figure that out as you go through. Mm -hmm. And obviously you're going to love some areas of the business more than others because that happens. And then you'll decide is that, you know, what are the opportunities in that area? What direction should I go in? Um, and so we see people throughout the year. Some know, some people know definitely, and that's the path and they're going to take that journey. And then other people, kind of decide throughout the year.
Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. And it's great to have that option there as well. Um, one thing we know about the degree programs is we have jet setters because there is fantastic trips across the two degree programs. I believe they head off to the likes of like London, Paris and Milan. Can you tell us some something about all yeah. those trips? Yeah, they're fun to do. So the first year is head to London and usually in February. So it's to a trade show and Mm -hmm. here in london and the students go as assistant trainee buyers um as opposed to students so they're able to um, have a look around ask questions we talk about the type of questions you should ask when you're when you're visiting trade shows and you're looking at products so you're asking where it's made you know what are the quantities you can order when would you expect delivery of the product tell me about your brand is a question they ask so, you know, and there's fashion shows, catwalks within that show. So it's in London, it's exciting to go. And then of course you can visit other fashion inspired, like the V&A always have a good show on, you know, it's Dior or Chanel, or it could be Princess Diana. There was a big showing on that a couple of years ago, her, her, her fashion, which was terrific. And then you've got, Paris then is slightly different feel. That's in second year. Paris is all about uh, textiles. So visiting, mm -hmm. visiting an international textile show. So it's very much about what's new in textiles. What is What are the new innovative textiles? You know, what are the colors? What do the fabrics look like? What do they feel like? And they're all on display. It's a huge show in Paris. It's international. So the students get to get a feel of that end of it, that end of the business, because especially when you're working in a company that, you know, you're developing the product from scratch, mm -hmm. textiles are a big, important part of that. All right. Of course. Because textiles have to match in with the type of product that you're going to develop. You know, mm -hmm. as a buyer, you develop product with the designers within companies. And then also, you know, if you're working for someone like Zara, you they do they develop their own manufacturing, so therefore textiles are hugely important. And third, third year then is Milan, and so there's a show in Milan, and that's a very exclusive um, trade show in Milan. I can't say too much about that because that's a, a very very well kept secret, um, secret that we can actually attend that show. Um, so don't, I won't say too much about that, but it's really good and really cool. Um, and then I was talking, I think we might go for a day to Birmingham with the third years as well, because yeah. the big show in Birmingham uh, twice a year called the Spring Fair. Mm -hmm. And so we might tip over for a day to Birmingham on Ryanair because they're nice and cheap and, and, and take a look at that show as well. And then you've also got localized field trips. Uh, the first years today were in um, a knitwear manufacturer is a really good one in Ireland and they were visiting that today. We also do store visits, um, you know, because we're trying to incorporate as much of the reality and the practical end of the business as well as learning the academic side of things. Of course, that's brilliant. So the, they will be well traveled by the end yeah. of it as well. Busy. <laughs> really that's busy. Got, they're very busy. I'd say out of all of our departments, they're always up and about and moving around as well. So I know they're very, very busy as well. Um, but it's great that they get that behind them. They get to learn kind of the terminology um, used in those sessions as well. So again, it, it offers a great opportunity for them when they're looking for employment later on. Um, and I'm sure it gives them massive confidence then when they're walking into interviews uh, with the, their dream brands um, and sitting down, they know exactly what to say and um, how to conduct themselves. So that's it's a fantastic opportunity as well. What would like an average day look like for a student then who's in the fashion department? Yes. So we try and focus our classes in on three days a week. Uh, we don't spread them out throughout the week because our mode of operation there is to allow people to be able to work as well as study. Okay. Mm -hmm. So of course the busiest business for fashion, the busiest days are the Thursday through Sunday. And so that allows, so we try and focus our classes in on Mondays, Tuesday and Wednesdays for the first and second years, the third years, then it's slightly less days in because um, you've less modules, but then a fo you're focused on a dissertation in the third year. So, but the first, you know, so we have modules, you're looking at two modules a day, 
and really focused. There are three hour sessions. They can be two to three hours, depending on what needs, to, you know, what the focus needs to be mm -hmm. for the day. But they're not, they're typically like that because we want to make sure that everything is covered, but then it's easier for people, especially if they're traveling as well, because we get a lot of students not living in Dublin. Obviously, it's very expensive to live in Dublin. So we have students traveling. So it accommodates students traveling as well. It makes it easier. Um, so mm -hmm. a typical day starts at 10 o'clock. It usually runs to four or five. Some days it's a little bit earlier. Just depends what's going on and what the focus is for that week. And then obviously, as you, you, you learn a lot of content and you do practical elements as well, but then the closer you get to assignment deadlines and exam deadlines, that there, that's where the focus is, you know, so leading mm -hmm. up to deadline dates, the, the classes or your sessions are focused in and around that. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's sort of what a typical um, week would look like. Mm -hmm. Amazing, brilliant. And you touched on it there as well. And I've actually previously studied with Portobello myself. And I know that there is a huge support system behind um, them when it comes to learners and supporting them through their studies. Um, I found them absolutely fantastic as well. Um, but we do go out of our way uh, generally to help people, even just the fact that we have the classes within kind of a three day period to accommodate those who are working as well. Again, these programs are created by industry experts like yourself and um, who are aware of what people's work life balances would look like um, and how best to kind of accommodate that as well. In terms of um, people who are looking for career opportunities, um, I'd say the fashion department probably has one of the highest, um, you know, in terms of getting a job from the program itself. Like, I think it's ridiculously high. It's in, yeah, it's easily in the upper 90s. Yeah. Sometimes it's a hundred. Yeah. Yeah. It's um, fantastic. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's lots of, cre you see, the thing about this is you've got, you're buying and merchandising and then you've got your fashion management. So mm -hmm. in second year, you make your choices and then you have some shared, you continue to have shared modules like finance. Don't get scared about finance, everybody out there. Cause that's what we find people go, Oh my God, finance. Yeah. But we teach you, we teach you the finance. We teach you how to use Excel. Excel mm -hmm. is used throughout the business. So you can't get away from that. You've got to learn to love numbers because numbers, numbers tell a great story. Okay. So, but we help you do that. And I think then, you know, you can, the career opportunities are, you know, in fashion buying, fashion merchandising, you've got then management. So you've got operations management that could be running a store and then going on to become an area manager, regional manager. You have brand management where you're responsible for a brand, okay, brand mm -hmm. success. You have marketing management, you have PR, you have pr production management, you might get into the production end of things. Um, so there's a lot allocation of stock. That's a job within the merchandising area. So allocation planner, um, that's, you know, looking at where stock goes, how, how often it, it gets delivered to stores, what are the delivery dates? What does that look like? You've also got source planning, you know, sourcing stock. Um, mm -hmm. And you've got sort of the, the PR end of things as well is in there. So there's lots of different opportunities within mm -hmm. the fashion industry, career opportunities mm -hmm. and very well paid opportunities mm -hmm. within the fashion mm -hmm. industry, mm -hmm. you know, so and really People, they, the big companies are looking for degrees these days. They really want the degree. I mean, I think that's just been a trend throughout business in the last yeah. 10 years. Yeah. It's definitely, that's where it's sitting at the moment. So, you know, mm -hmm. companies are really looking for, you know, it's, it, used, it used to be a lot about learning the trade as you grow and things like that in the business um but that trend has slightly changed obviously there yeah. are people who are still successful um with their career journey on that route but generally the big companies these days that's the direction they were taking they're looking for someone with a degree in the discipline Definitely, because it's become very competitive yeah. now. Yeah. Um, it's very, very competitive. And it, that's because um, really it's a 
global role. Do you know, you can travel with this type of degree. Um, you, we've got past students who've moved abroad and they have exceptionally um, interesting experience now in, the, uh, in their jobs and their roles. And um, so it does give you that opportunity to travel um, and it does give you kind of the edge as well, because like like you were saying that the general consensus is that you would have a degree of some sort, but to have a degree that's so specialised yeah. um, in fashion as a business degree with fashion is fantastic. Like it's, yeah. it's, a, it's an amazing I, opportunity. I think what we do specifically at Portobello is because we incorporate so much of the practical element of it. I mean, the feedback from our partner employers are that the, the students that come into us from Portobello know a bit about the business and what they're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's you're not going to know everything. I mean, you're going to go in as a trainee. So, but mm -hmm. we're giving you the tools in or you know to be able to sit down in a trade meeting and look at samples and, and know what that's about because mm -hmm. we've learned about that, about choosing, getting samples from suppliers and and critiquing them to, to make sure their specifications are correct. That means the right sizes, the right colors, the right length of a skirt, perhaps the right zipper quality in a mm -hmm. jacket. Um, we've gone through that. We've done that in class. And so when you go into the role, you know a little bit about what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you do hit the ground running and mm -hmm. that's the feedback we do get. And that's why I mm -hmm. think our students and past students have been success successful in when they've started in a company because they're, they're, they're not, you know, it's not all brand new. Mm -hmm. They have an insight mm -hmm. into what should be happening because we've really focused in on that in, yeah. in the pro degree programs. Yeah, absolutely. And again, something we just lightly touched on earlier for the QQI level fives is that there is um, a blended option. Yeah. So you can study online. We also offer that for our fashion yeah. degrees. Yeah. So you can do full time and then yes. blend it. Um, yeah. And again, that gives you the opportunity to do it throughout uh, Ireland and, and further afield if you wish to do yeah. it as well. So again, you can kind of juggle that and then potentially figure out your pathway in terms of where yeah. you want to work or what brand you want to work exactly. for as well. Yeah. Um, and it's a very, it's, it, it's almost the same experience realistically, because you still get an invite to all these fantastic trips we were talking about yeah. earlier and um, the same tutors, same content, everything like yeah. that as well. So um, it's just, it's a, just a different a, style of learning. It's just, exactly. it, 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 it enables you to work full time. Now, obviously you've got to balance that with study. So that's quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, but it's people are very determined when they're choosing that pathway. And, and that's the sort mm -hmm. of demographic of student we tend to attract onto the blended program mm -hmm. is that they're working in the business um, and they really want to, you know, they could be working in the store, but really want to get that degree under their under their belt so they can move mm -hmm. forward in a career and but mm -hmm. they want to continue working, you know, so yeah. and, uh, and it allows that to happen. It is challenging um, to study like that, but certainly we're having great success with it. Absolutely. And then speaking of challenging, <laughs> what are the assignments like? Because this question comes up all the time for me yeah. um, people are very concerned. But again, like I said, we always we have a fantastic team that will try their best to um, help and relay the information of yeah. what is being asked and how to best answer it as well. So what do the assignments kind of look like? Yeah, so the assignments are a mix. Mm -hmm. um, we, we actually have very few exams. In, in, in the whole program. They're mm -hmm. mainly a combination of written assignments, reports, uh, which you would have mm -hmm. to do in the business anyway, and mm -hmm. you know, group assessments and presentations. Presentations is a big part. Don't get scared about that, everybody. Everyone says, oh gosh, presentations. Um, you know, again, we teach you, we go through that. Mm -hmm. You're in a safe space with your, your peers your cohort of students, you're all in the same, doing the same thing. So you're all learning. So we spend a lot of time around presentation skills because um, in this business, presenting is huge. Yeah, you've got to present mm -hmm. new products. You've got to present new lines. You've got to present, present on, if you're in the operations end of the business, you have to present on sales and trading mm -hmm. reports. 
um, you know, to wh whoever's involved in that. So, you, you know, you've got to deal with suppliers. So building the confidence around that. So I think the assignments are a combination of all of that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it definitely. And that's very manageable as well. And like you said, there is few um, exams, which big sigh of relief from everyone, I'd say. Yeah. Um, so and assignments are generally a lot more manageable, do you know, that kind of way. Yeah. But likewise, in exam um, situations, again, we have a great team here and the support is there to make sure that you are in your best possible situation when you're sitting down that day to take part in it as well. So, um, yeah, big sigh of relief for everyone as well. <laughs> And so, of exams, but they're manageable. They're fine. <laughs> um, and then just a little bit about in terms of um, entry requirements to the degree programs. Um, so we have our great QQI level five. So that will bring you straight in, which is great. Um, and you'll get to know the tutors and some of the content beforehand. So it's great. Um, if you're coming from potentially your taken part in the, your leave insert or you just recently completed your leave insert as well and um, generally look for um, a grade three in maths and English and a pass in four other subjects so it's not based around your CAO points so again big sigh of relief <laughs> um, although the program itself is very very popular so we do only have a certain amount of places so what we usually try to do is have a quick interview beforehand just to make sure that you're the right fit we're the right fit and we're all heading in the right direction as well um, and then from there we can um, hopefully give you a conditional place with ourselves and then potentially we have lots of learners who come from um, different backgrounds and they've um, got lots of academic achievements behind themselves so there is advanced entry options as well into year two if you have um, a level six QQI um, in fashion or marketing um, but we just just need to have a quick look at that beforehand um, and then we can give you the go ahead and see if, if uh, advanced entry is an option to yourself as well. Um, so that's kind of the next step if you were interested in the degree programs. And then the QQI level fives are a little bit easier and um, you can book your place on the website um, and we can get you enrolled in the next um, intake effectively as well. So I think also, so, um, it, you know, it's really important to point out that our classes are, are small. Mm -hmm. um, they're not huge yeah. 200 people in a lecture hall classes where you have a, you can get lost, you know, mm -hmm. so you people need to decide what type of learning experience they want to, to have. Yeah. And with us, you know, it's very much invested in you guys as a group, but as individuals and, you know, no one can go MIA. So everyone is accountable yeah. and accounted for so that we can mm -hmm. really and if anyone's struggling if anyone needs help you know life gets in the way of things like this life gets in the way things happen things come up and so we're very supportive you know we're also a fit you know validated and our with our partner london met university so you not only get your degree from portobello but for Lon from london metropolitan university and their ethos is very much about student support as is ours and really helping students and accommodating students to 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 be the best they can be and you know and not get lost in a huge mix of people where they don't have, you know, people don't recognize when someone is struggling. We really, it's very important to us that we help our students mm -hmm. through everything. And that, you know, our, you know, our team of lecturers really support that. And also, you know, we'll answer questions very quickly. We'll, we'll you know, we'll have a conversation if it's needed, as well as the, you know, the scheduled feedback sessions. Um, mm -hmm. But that's about people being supported to develop because that, mm -hmm. this is a crucial time that, you know, people come in and they're trying to, to advance their career path and try, you know, looking to get opportunities. And so, you know, that, that's our, that's our ethos and that, that's our value mm -hmm. system within Portobello and London Met University is to support that. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And like I said, I was the past student of Portobello, so I can definitely echo everything you said there. I felt extremely supported throughout um, and my tutors were so helpful as well. I had lots of questions <laughs> um, and it really depends what type of learner yeah. you are, do you know, that kind of way. Um, and I find a lot of our lecturers can almost, you know, read what kind of learner you are before you find your feet. So, um, yeah, there, there's huge support there uh, for everyone and every type of dynamic and learning style that's behind it as well so um so yeah is there anything else you'd like to sort of yeah Mm -hmm. so it's sort of to connect in with that you know you know you start off in year one and then as you grow through the program year two and year three you have to become very independent you know independent learning i mean self-directed learning takes up over 100 hours per semester and that is Mm -hmm. about taking the responsibility to do the research um you know to Mm -hmm. take the information to 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 decide yourself on your planning and how we'll support you but there's also an expectation that you develop and you do the reading and you do the research so putting Mm -hmm. those things together then you become very very successful um so there is a there is you know we do have we do offer a lot of support but there i just wanted to be clear that there is the onus on people developing themselves as well as us Mm -hmm. supporting that throughout Mm -hmm. the degree program because Mm -hmm. when you get into third year you know you have to do a dissertation and a research uh research paper as you do in every uh final year of a degree program and Mm -hmm. so you know it's really important that people sort of, we give you the tools in the beginning Mm -hmm. and we Mm -hmm. talk to you about how to develop goals, how to develop a study plan. But then it's really important that people then take that on board and run with it independently as well as uh, getting support. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Brilliant. I'm all Um, about the reality, uh, Sarah. I'm all about the reality of it. Yeah. (laughs) But it's fun. It's better to have that. It's challenging. It's fun. (laughs) It's you know it's hard of work. course it's you know there's a mix of practical and academics you know yeah. you, you assignments yeah. come down at the end of every semester and they're all in around the same time frame so you are yeah. scrambling you are pulling things together um you know even if the best planners in the world end up scrambling and put but that's the business exactly. you know if you're opening yeah. a new store i mean i remember opening a store with Saks Fifth avenue a new store when I was working that end of the business, you know, and we are changing floor floor plans eight hours before opening, Mm -hmm. you know, before opening the doors, you are moving. And that's, that's the nature of this business. There's always Mm -hmm. something new happening. It happens very quickly. You're given a brief to put in, you know, pull three new limited products together that you want to sit in Mm -hmm. stores and you can get manufactured in three weeks time in fast fashion. You know and you know do it in an hour yeah mm-hmm. and so that's the nature of the business so our yeah. program reflects that okay mm-hmm. if you were studying something else it might have, have a totally different feel to it yeah but there's no point in us not doing that because then you would go into the business and you would be oh my god what yeah. have i done but that's why we we sort of include all the support, but then include the challenging end of it too. Of course. And the reality of this business, because it, it you get, you can earn a, a really, really good salaries, but you certainly, there's a lot to do. Yeah, of course. So yeah. become akin to the adrenaline rush. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, fall in love with the adrenaline rush. Yeah. Cause that, but that's what you do. Yeah. I mean, and that's what I did. Yeah. So I fell in love with all the, running around in the crazy yeah you know products having to be developed in a short period of time and then Mm -hmm. you know some products not moving off a shop floor when when they should be selling and Mm -hmm. figuring out then where to move the products what to do with the products you know how how do you resolve that because at the end of the day it's a business Mm -hmm. and retailers Mm -hmm. are very business savvy Mm -hmm. and they're all about maximizing sales Mm-hmm. getting a return on their investment so it's really about jumping on board with that but you know i think we give you a, a re i think that we give you a really good insight into that end of the business mm-hmm. and i certainly am, i'm pretty direct and i don't sugarcoat 
you know, how that business runs and how it works. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. you know, I just know, you know, I'm, I think I'm a pussycat compared to, you know, uh, management, senior management and senior buyers mm -hmm. out there. But I mean, even if you watch the, the series in Pri on Primark, I don't know if anyone watched that, but it was on for six weeks. Primark mm -hmm. is one of the best employers, yeah. by the way. And they had a fantastic series and it really showed the speed of the business yeah. and the di how dynamic it is and how they were presenting products, junior buyers to senior buyers and what the senior buyer was asking, you know, mm -hmm. how many are you going to buy? What, mm -hmm. Where is it going to be displayed on the shop floor? Mm -hmm. What are going to be the margins on that product? You know, mm -hmm. what else are you developing? Mm -hmm. You know, what are the deadlines around that? And really, yeah. the teams having to know to to you know so those people in the business are very business savvy and retail mm -hmm. savvy and that's what you're dealing Definitely. with and they the expectation is that things are met deadlines are met you have to yeah. have deadlines because if you're saying to the customer this product is going to be you know because your brand has built this strategy around the product being in front of the customer at a certain time of the year then that's what you have to live up to because if you're yeah. late then you lose the customer oh, of course yeah right? and so that's what we try and replicate mm -hmm. in, in in how we challenge students to come on board with that yeah that was a fantastic show as well yeah, <laughs> i was tuned in it was really good really well done <laughs> And I saw some of our students in in the yeah in the yeah. team, so that was fantastic. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it really showed how changeable the fashion industry is. I think there was a bit on their makeup sec section, and they were like, "Well, we won't we." And now it's such a predominant part yeah. of uh, Primark. I can't even remember what it was like before it had uh, yeah. the makeup and, and the beauty section. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, it's really really fantastic. So we haven't had that many. Uh, questions pop in okay. um on the live but it's completely open so anyone can just um add a comment there if they have a question and we will be happy to go through anything um likewise in terms of information after tonight um you can always reach out my information will be shared um in the story just after this live today um and if you can if you if you've missed out on that you can find my information on the website as well um, you can book a call in, send an email, um, send me a quick chat message if you want an answer there and then, um, set up a video call, whatever suits. And like I said, maybe near the, near the start of the month, I suppose, we'll be doing building tours. Um, you'll get to see the layout of the building, uh, the fashion room, the department itself, um, which is nice for people who might be thinking about enrolling so they can kind of find their feet before the induction day as well. So it gives you a nice opportunity to kind of figure out where we are, what we look like, how to get through everything so you feel nice and organized then on your first day as well brilliant no questions just yet <laughs> is there anything else Anna you'd like to cover or um I know I think we've gone through everything in, in pretty good detail I mean mm -hmm. it is a fun career I yeah. mean I enjoyed my tenure with the retailers I worked with mm -hmm. um, I still am passionate about the business Definitely. Um, and now I'm deaf and I'm always been passionate about people developing, helping people to develop and be successful. And mm -hmm. that hasn't changed and it continues. So and you know, just it's fun. It can it can be a lot of fun. So that's what I yeah, love. Definitely. One hundred and ten percent. And we would be delighted to have you all on board. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to show you that fun. <laughs> yeah, sure. Find the fun. The yeah, exactly. The adrenaline, the joy and the adrenaline. adrenaline. Exactly. <laughs> um, so I think we might finish up. Um, okay. Everyone's a little bit shy for the questions tonight, right. but don't worry, you can always reach out. Um, I'd be happy to help as well. Um, and we can try get any questions you might have sorted then. All right. That was great. Okay, to thanks everyone you. for joining Thank us. And thanks very much, Anne Marie, for yeah. your time. You've been so generous. Yeah. Oh, you're very welcome. Sorry I was late in the beginning. <laughs> no, no. Okay. It wasn't you, it was technology. See, <laughs> and I was late. Not a great example. <laughs> anyway, that's Brilliant. technology. 
it's the it's the awesome. you of every you can be the most amazing person at what you do i know and then the I know. technology will level you right? i know you could do 100 test runs and it just takes one yeah, exactly it so. just takes one oh i'm on the wrong insta page yeah yeah well we got there in the we end did. so that's the same thing thanks everyone. <laughs> okay everybody. thanks so much Anne Marie, and thanks yeah. a million for all everyone right. joining thanks us as well in. all right thanks I enjoyed it so much. Thank bye you Sarah for inviting me bye bye <laughs>